would be life to be without faith. Anything else can go, but my faith is firm. There's no question about it. It's built on a firm foundation. Hilda Fahler, at 108 years old, she is the oldest living alum of Warper College and the oldest alumni member of St. Paul's Lutheran Church and School. Her ability to get around is diminished, but she she walks in her wheelchair two, two miles a day and, and knows the importance of getting exercise, and I admire that in her. As I grew up, uh, we exercised, and uh, sometimes, I would walk all the way around the cornfield just to get exercise. I just felt that when God gave me a body, he gave it to me to take care of it too. And if I could do it by exercising, it was my duty to do it. It's very inspiring for the people that come in short term. When they see Hilda up walking around at 108 years old, they're like, oh, I better get going. And so I can get home and everything. They think it's awesome that she is 108 and she does all the walking, wheeling around in a wheelchair that she does and playing the piano. Sometimes I played it every day. Sometimes I played it probably three or four times a day. Sometimes I didn't play it at all because I was doing other things. A life without music would be pretty dull, is all I can say. Hilda is a, a gem. Virtually the entire congregation knows Hilda. Even if they've never met her, they know who she is because she is our oldest member and has um, lived through all of those eras that, that we talk about when we write the history of our, our congregation. When I was growing up, we were taught little songs at home, prayers and songs. I certainly would not have wanted to live without it because it sort of shaped my whole life. Hilda was born in 1911 in South Dakota to a family of farmers. Hilda's parents were German immigrants, and Hilda was the second oldest of seven siblings. This is a picture of Hilda with her brother and sister at their farmstead with two of their draft horses. Of course, at that time, that was one of the more important things on the farm was to have a good set of draft horses. There were six girls born, and I'm sure my father would rather have had some of them to be boys. So we grew up in my father's boys, and my mother's helper too. I think it uh, starts back when they lived in South Dakota. Her parents wanted them to have a Christian education and they found out that there was a way, if they moved to Iowa, they could come to Waverly and enroll their children as students at St. Paul's Lutheran School. To know that, that the people in the past moved to Waverly area just so that they could be a part of the education here shows how important it was in the old, but I think it's just as important today. After Hilda graduated from St. Paul's, she pursued a teaching degree from Wartburg Normal College and graduated in 1930. I'm, I'm reminded, of course, of our founding. Uh, Pastor Grossman, largely at his own expense, built Old Main out there to be Wartburg Normal School, to be the, the, the teacher's college. And uh, it is so fascinating to me that not many years later, uh, it became the place uh, uh, where Hilda was educated and became a teacher girls at that time, we had about three choices. You could become a teacher, you could become a nurse, you could become a secretary. Well, secretary was out, I didn't care for that. I knew that. But um, I had such good teachers in 
St. Paul's. I decided I wanted to be like they had been, that they were Christian day school teachers. But thee was me forever. I'll sing the noble song. Hilda graduated from Wartburg College, uh, the normal school, in 1930. That was very early in the Great Depression. Uh, the, the economy begins to tumble in 1929, fall of 1929. And so when Hilda graduated the following May, she was entering a workforce where there was already growing unemployment. Yeah, that was something. I kind of remember when word came that like the banks were closing and things were falling apart in businesses. I can remember my dad, he and mother, I think, were thinking, well, what will happen? People of faith are always hopeful, and the reason they're hopeful is because we believe in a God of history. So a God who's constantly directing not just our own individual lives, but history itself. So when she saw in real time the, the sinking of the Titanic in Lusitania, she would have really relied on that notion of, of a hopeful God. And, and Hilda has always been a person of hope. I live very much by the values that I established in that life. And when people now just speak about it and think how hard it is or must have been for you, I would say, well, yes, it was hard, but I wouldn't trade it. Hilda taught in Christian day schools around the Midwest during the Great Depression and eventually moved back to Waverly to take care of her ailing mother. Then she began teaching at St. Paul's. A classmate of mine who had been a friend of mine through grade school at St. Paul's still writes back to me and says Hilda was such an influence in his life because she was the one teacher that made him realize he had talent to write and that student became a good friend of mine all through my life and he actually wrote a book and so I think it all goes back to what he learned from Hilda. Hilda never married or had children, instead opting to live her life alongside her sisters and parents. I guess I really wasn't too interested at that time because somehow, how do you leave your home behind? <laughs> Why do you leave uh, your dad and mother behind? And uh, I was, it wasn't that I wasn't interested. Yeah, I liked a couple of guys but never well enough that I would ever want to share a life with him, which probably is unusual, but I don't know. I was just happy without him. She had a couple instances where uh, she had a little um, problem with uh, her health after she moved in with her sister, Lorena. Lorena called me and said, Hilda cannot speak, she cannot move. And so I immediately called 911. We went over there, uh, took her to the hospital. Hilda lived independently until she was 103 before moving into Shell Rock Senior Living. Shortly after, her sister Lorena moved into the room next door. Lorena, Hilda's last surviving sibling, passed away in May of 2019 at the age of 99. We were often thinking, which one of us will be the last to go? And I think she thought she was going to be. We went over as soon as we found out that Lorena had passed away, and Hilda is, was sitting in the room with the body. And I know she was um, trying to tell the people that are you sure that she has passed away? Maybe she's just in a coma because her body is still warm. And I think she was, at that point, still having a little bit of a difficult time dealing with the fact that she will be gone. One of the girls said, I think she'll be all right. 
and I was in, but they had already laid her down. She was gone. Her hands were folded. I couldn't even hold her hand anymore. And I'm not one to shed tears very easily. And I don't think I did unless someone would speak to me about it and then it would be uh, tears of sympathy. But normally, we were not an emotional family that way. She has not outwardly expressed uh, uh, regret or a loss of her having her sister gone. But on the other hand, I know it's been in the back of her mind because that's someone that was in her life for 99 years and suddenly that person is gone. That's what age in life does. It sorts out the important things. And I'm so glad she had all that time because she has been continuing to give it back in ways that we feel more secure in our own lives. Hilda has, has given us so many things over the years just by her legacy, just by her ability to be that oldest member, that has part of St. Paul's uh, Church, part of the school. To say that she is still here, I think she still has something to offer. Hilda would be the first person to say that she's not celebrity, but that she's a person of faith. And that's because it's rooted in humility. And I think that's one of the reasons why many people are drawn to her. It's not taking the limelight, it's rather living out a life that other people want to emulate. Well, that's, that's, that's genuine leadership. I mean, that's exactly what we all admire. We cannot give a number to the people that Hilda's life has touched because they continue being planted in other people. Even though she's 108 years old, her seeds have been planted throughout the years and from there they're planting in other people. It's exponential. No, I'm not afraid of dying. If the Lord wants me today, I've got it. I've got my things in order, I think. It's, it's hard for me to even comprehend. You know, you say you die, and your soul goes to heaven. Well, just what does that mean? Whenever we lose someone with great life experience, such as Hilda, someone who can look back over a long period of time and talk about things with some degree of perspective because they can see how things worked out. Every time we lose one of those people, we lose a treasure. A number of years ago, when I used to um, play for services, sometimes at Bartles, well, one of the ladies said to me one day, God isn't through with you yet. I do believe that God has a definite plan for each one of us. <laughs>